because we did a podcast not long ago about nitrogen efficiencies in soils. Mm -hmm. Different soil types are going to act differently with different forms of nitrogen. Yeah. And that's that would probably be another one. that That's one I'm looking at uh, going into 2025 is my heavy river bottoms. I'm going to treat probably a little differently than I am my clay, you know, my, my clay, red or dirt creek ground. Um, yeah. You know, or at least at least being <clears throat> aware, you know, instead of mass treat things, trying to be more intentional of I think it's a great I think it's it's my starting point. So yeah. I think it's a great starting point for my operation. No, just learning. OK, and the, we have this we have this kind of soil. We have two kinds of soils. Primarily, we got super high mag soils that we need. I'm going to farm and I'm going to farm intentional based off how those soils function. And thankfully, most of those acres are fairly close to each other. And my crit ground, different functioning soil, not high mag, higher calcium, you know, high, good. it's good dirt. Yeah. But, it, you know, lower, I don't know, little, little lower OM, yep. uh, organic matter levels, things of that nature, but it doesn't fight magnesium. So I'm going to, okay, in my crit dirt, I'm going to uh, take this approach. Yeah. Um, you know, I might run. This in furrow on the crit ground, and this in furrow on the river ground, based off of how I know my soils function in different environments. Um, you know, I'm going to move to more fulvic in the planter, yeah, uh, because generally we do try to get out sooner on corn in my region in eastern Kansas. Um, you know, and a lot of guys, it's funny. I talk to guys in the North and they can't believe I plant corn for beans. They can't believe it. Yeah. And then I tell them what I tell them. <clears throat> I plant, we don't, I try not to plant beans before May 20th and I try to get done by June 10th. Okay. So my birthday is May 24th. That's my favorite day to plant beans. If m my wife always asks, what do you want to do for my, for your birthday? I want to plant beans. And, Perfect. And, yeah. I, I want to yep. plant beans. And she's like, you want to do something with the family? Well, how do you, I mean, you can't say no. Yeah. I mean, sure, come ride with me in the tractor. Yep, because I'm know, planting beans. Bring me a burger and fries, <laughs> yep. and I want to plant beans on my birthday. <laughs> but um, Easter Heathman, Joey's grandpa, he always said that the best time to plant beans in eastern Kansas, where we are at, mm -hmm. <laughs> it was rodeo weekend. That was the first weekend in June. He always okay. said, no matter what, that was always the best beans. And we're planting a, a four... The, er, the shortest season we plant is a 4-2. Okay. Um, our average is a 4-6, and we will plant up to a 4-9. Uh, and we will we'll plant those beans into May, 1st of June, and we'll harvest October 10th, October 20th. It's okay. generally the window that where combines are rolling. Yep. Um, and if we can catch a rain September 1st, it will add 25% to our yield. Because, you know, we are trying to delay that pod fill time to once we start to cool a little bit. Yeah. But we don't cool fast here because we're far enough south. Yeah. We are, that month of September is our fill period, um, and it's a slower fill period than, I mean, dude, I don't know. It's it's slower than other areas I observe um, that are planting short season beans in cooler climates. But, man, if we can get a rain in 1st of September, that's what we're trying. We're trying to not fill in August. We're trying to push that as far back as possible. Labor Day weekend, it almost always rains. And if it doesn't, it doesn't. That's fine. But more years than not, it does. And then, boom, that's when our real top end is hit. Gotcha. Um, and we're not putting on more vegetative growth at that point. The plants are like, we're done growing. We're going to pod fill. And that's when we focus a lot of, of foliar fertility is – that last week, of August, first week of September, hopefully getting ready for that last hard push. Yes. Um, you know, running fulvix, kelp, things of that nature to really try to push that that grain production. It's at the time where farmers are burned out. We're tired of sitting in that stupid sprayer. We're tired of going out. You know, I don't have pivots, but I know my the pit, my pivot oh, buddies yeah. are tired of going yep. out to pivots. But yep. um, that's probably one that uh, I think... I had a conversation with a guy. He said, I've got X amount of dollars left in my budget. Where, where do you think I should spend it? I said, let's wait. Let's, let's, let's just leave that $20 yeah. handy right now. Yep. Because we don't know what we're going to be thrown this year 
Um, if we have a late so and so, if we have a late, if we have bugs come in late, you're going to need that for to run insecticide. If you have a you know a late, if you have or if, like if you have a southern rust move in or something else, you know that's just what we can have move in in our area move in sooner than normal where it might impact a crop. Hey, sure glad we had that earmarked for a yeah. insurance fund. Yep. Um, I don't know. That's that's been something that really has been beneficial ROI on my operation. You and I talked a lot last year. It was, I was right on the edge, <laughs> my corn. I'm like, man, there's, there's Southern rust here. You're like, dude, you're denting. Yep. You're denting. It's okay. How much of the leaf, what leaf? And then, you know, assessing, we get so scared, man. We get so scared by what ag is telling us. Oh my, every year, dude, in May or 1st of June, Southern rust is coming from Oklahoma. It sounds like a, you know, Genghis Khan invasion. <laughs> and we're just, you know, and we're like, oh my God, oh, the planes. Yeah. And when in reality, is it here? How have we prepped our plants coming into 2024, 25? You know, have we set a stage to be ready for things like this? Are we quickly adaptable? Let's not let fear drive decisions. Yep. Um, well, and I get to a point, too. I'm pretty sure a conversation was, what does your 10-day forecast look like? And yeah. I think it was in the middle of the heat spell. Yeah. You know, it's just one of those situations, like, it's not a very... Warm uh, and windy. Yeah, no warm rain. and windy. You know what I mean? I go back to... During that same time in my area, I think about pivots, and we're running those every three days. And, gosh, going back to, you know, if a southern rust does come into a pivot, gosh, we're breeding. We're breeding grounds for a fungus. Oh, yeah. You know, at least in my neck of the woods. Damp, um, higher, more shade. Yeah, yeah. So I started asking, how can we make that more efficient? effective or more efficient you know or using like a generic quilt or something like that to cover the rust you know and i just think uh if we're going to get through this year be as most profitable as possible it's it's looking at each area and making sure that dollar is justified okay um so i can sit here i mean a person could do a triva pro and if you have a tar spot or you about need a systemic fungicide for that to, to help solve it. Um, but in my area, we haven't seen them yet. Okay. I mean, our, honestly, rust is probably our biggest issue, southern rust. Yeah. So, um, but generic Quilt XL has great ratings on that, or very good ratings. Yeah. It gets the job done. Sure. And generally when rust comes in on wheat or corn... It's generally close to har- it's close to mm-hmm. harvest, close to the end. Yeah, and so you're not looking to buy forty days. You're looking to buy fourteen. Yeah, twenty. Yeah. Well, that's I mean most of your fungicide. Most of your fungicides some have twenty one days, but most of them fourteen days is what you're trying to protect there. It's so. it's funny on the fungicide commercials you hear up to up to up to yep. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, that's great. Guys, if you've liked the information that you've seen so far, go ahead and check out the full-length podcast on our YouTube channel. Be sure to subscribe there. It's also on all the major podcast platforms. Um, We're constantly dropping info and more content on all the social media platforms, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, etc. Check it out for a lot more content.